Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted. It is Monday, February 10th. I'm not normally in the studio working and doing a live on Monday, so that's why you get the crazy hair and the no makeup look today, um, because it's Monday. But uh, I wanted to finish up the cups that we started on Saturday and show everybody exactly what it was I was talking about. Um, we are filming vertically instead of horizontally today because Facebook Live does not want to let me flip my camera. So I want those of you viewing me, seeing me in the correct direction on Facebook. So let's get started with where we're at now. This weekend you saw, let me turn things around there, and see my Yeti tumblers. Um, we started a bunch of tumblers and we completed two. Let me grab the two that are completed. So what we started with, come back here, angle up to me. Ooh, the hair is bad today, sorry everybody. It's what happens on Mondays. I don't usually plan to be live and now it's crazy. All right, so this one, we painted set coat light metallic green, applied copper, uh, the weathered copper foil, and the ice colored um, glitter. Sorry, lost my words. Again, Monday, I'm usually quiet at home. <laughs> hey, Kathleen, nice to see you. So we did that, then we put the epoxy coating on it, and then to make a, a little more detail, we layered in this pattern over here and in between layers of uh, epoxy and look how pretty that came out. Now, this is the one that I think I'm giving to my husband. I hope he's not watching. Chip, if you're watching, turn off right now so that you don't see your Valentine's Day gift. Um, this is the one that I did for my husband. It's got the Garrison glitter foil. I had painted it black, done the I love yous and the hearts in black glitter. And even though it's really hard to say it says love always on there. I, I did a bad placement and put black glitter on top of um, a dark spot in the foil. That was my own fault. Then the hearts on the other side, put epoxy over and sealed it. Um, this could probably use another coat of epoxy if I wanted it, because I can actually still feel the glitter there. So I could coat it again if I wanted to and make that perfectly smooth. Now, the other day, I also had a little leftover epoxy and foils and stuff, so I did a phone case. Um, I put the paint on, primed it, put the foil on, and put a couple layers of glitter on, and then poured epoxy. And the reason I'm showing you this is because we're going to do the veining on this. I'm also going to show you how you handle uh, things like dribble. And if you can see, I'm pulling up a little red paint. It's because I had a little touch-up to do on the side. Um, but we also have to clean up the drips. I have another coat to do on here. We'll put it in the dry box to cure up. The inside of the cup has product. Is that a problem? No, this cup does, none of the cups have product. What you're seeing is pieces of tape. But if it's got the epoxy on it inside, um, that isn't a problem. The epoxy is food safe. You can sand it down, chip it off, scrub it off. And if you swallowed a piece of it, you just pass it through. So you would absolutely um, be safe to use it. Um, and the, if it was paint and stuff, it would just clean off because it hasn't completely bonded to the surface. So meanwhile, uh, let's get back to where I was going with these things. My brain is a little bit like mush on Mondays, so this may be a little bit convoluted. Where did I put my sandpaper that I just put all over here so I can reach it? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, here we go. Oh, look at my husband's. Yes, I know what's inside there. Don't worry about it. That was just a little fuzz that got stuck in there. That'll wash out. Um, okay, so here we go. We're gonna work on this one. You, and you can see it's got texture to it. It's, you know, there's a little, you can see a little stuff sticking up here. So the second coat of epoxy will smooth that. But meanwhile, I'm giving it a light sand, 
with 400 grit sandpaper. I'm just scuffing up the epoxy a little bit um, because that will then uh, allow me to paint this surface and then pour another coating of epoxy over it. So, but the first thing I'm gonna do, and, and you can see on the edges here too, I had some dribbles, because unlike the cup rotator, which prevents that, this doesn't have anything that uh, prevents the dribbles. So what I gotta do is take my little Dremel, and you can do it with either a grinder or a saw blade. This one happens to have the saw blade on it, because that's what I was using for something else, and I may need the grinder later. Turn it down. I have this set, I think, on four or six. And I'm just taking this and cutting down the dribbles. Now this requires a gentle hand. Um, let me put this in the center because all I see right here in the front of the screen is your comments, so I can't always see where things are. Sorry, I'm quiet when I use power tools, basically so I don't cut my own fingers off. And yes, I should be wearing a mask while I do this. Now I'm going to be really honest with you on this one. This was not my best choice of phone case covers to do. I've done a whole lot of phone case covers, but I bought this one on sale. I bought this one on sale and couldn't, it, the box was sealed. So I thought it was a rigid plastic and it's kind of flexible which is not necessarily the best choice for epoxy because eventually you can create a delamination with your epoxy. Um, let's see, where did I put my alcohol? Uh, there we go, there's my alcohol. So now I've sanded this down, I'm just gonna take a little spritz of alcohol to wipe the surface, remove any grease. Uh, I care. I Carrie, hi, Car. I can't see everybody's name for I'm sorry if I'm looking at people's name funny. Um, I just can't see as easily on my phone when it's angled. Okay. So, and of course, I don't worry about what the inside looks like. Nobody's going to see that. But what I did do is I accidentally, I will hit occasionally down to the surface um, with the Dremel. It's not a big deal because I know I'm putting more epoxy on it. Um, so I will touch up this edge with paint to make sure it looks nice and neat and clean. Then I'm gonna paint on the other side and we're gonna have um, a little bit of a, a secondary epoxy pour over on it so that it looks completed. And I've got my brushes over here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is loosen up a brush that got put away with a little crap in it. 
Hey Sandy, nice to see you. Hi Becky. If I don't see any of your names or don't ask answer your questions right away, it's because I've got the phone right here in front of me, but it's angled down so I can see my work and so you can see it. And I won't necessarily always catch every question that comes by. So I'm gonna put a little bit. We're using some faux cream color in magenta. And put it in a little cup here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take my brush and go right on the edge here, just to clean that up. <sighs> um, this phone case is for me. So if I was doing it for a client, I would probably be a lot more careful on how I do stuff. Um, when it's for me, I do all my testings on, on new product ideas on myself first. Um, because that way I know where the failures are and it's not going to a client with failures. It's going to me with failures first. Um, so example, I knew this case as soon as I pulled it out, it wasn't going to be sold. It was going to me because it was flexible and I wasn't going to be crazy with selling something I could not warranty the way I wanted to. Um, you can buy cases for whatever size phones anybody needs on Amazon. Just pay attention to what kind of case it is. Again, like I said, I popped into Target and bought this. It was already sealed in a box, so it didn't tell me that it was flexible or if it was rigid. I thought it was more rigid, which is a better choice when you're pouring epoxy. And I got a little bit of crud on the inside there. And I still got that crud there. Clean that up, Maury. Okay, so I've tidied my edges up because I will see this edge around the side of my phone, so I want it to look neat and tidy. And when after the second pour, when I have more dribbles, um, I will, instead of cutting them like I did before, I will grind them with a sanding tip and then use a polishing edge so that it cleans it really neatly, as opposed to the way I was just doing it, which is basically lopping off the dribbles. Um, that's good for the first pass, but it's not great for the second one. All right, so now I'm gonna see if I can zoom you into what I'm doing here a little bit. The camera's gonna let me do that while I stick my fingers in front of stuff. Uh, there we go. There we are. Let's see if I can turn that so you can see it a little better. There we go. So you can see what I've done here is this would be for um, a geode. I've layered some basic colors in, but there's no veining to it, which is part of what makes geodes so pretty is that they have some defining lines and then some blurred lines in them. Uh, I'm reaching over here to grab a paintbrush. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a couple of veins in here, and that's part of why I sanded it. So I'm just gonna do this along the edge. And I'm not going for precise lines. I'm actually trying to make it a little bit uneven and wobbly because that looks more natural and more organic. Look at veins and stones. They don't look straight and perfect. They're often very jagged and very fractured. And so there I've got that line painted in. I'll take another brush. I have all my little fine lining brush all jammed in with my big ones. That tells me I need to do some organizing. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of faux cream color white. This is a faux effects product. These are colorants that you can apply into any um, water-based product and it will ch adjust the color, but faux cream color also has an acrylic binder to it. So you can use it as a standalone paint just as you are watching me use it. This in itself will dry hard and be a very, very good paint. You can use it for, like I'm doing for details, you can use it on murals, you can use it on um, furniture, you can use it on all kinds of stuff. So I'm painting in a white vein in here 
just because I want a little more definition where I have my colors and my veins because I like the way that looks. Um, and again, when you're doing this, if you want it more, these are, you know, obviously this is what I would call a fantasy geode. I mean, let's face it, geodes don't break apart with silver tinselly glitter. <laughs> but I do love how it looks. And so I want to put a little more in there. I think I'm just going to do this one with the pink and the white because I like the way that looks. Oh yeah, that's coming out just the way I wanted it. It's a good day that when I visualize something in my head, it comes out the way I want it to on the reel. And really, I just use colors for my veins that either in the same family as what I've already put down here or complement it because you want the veins to enhance this. Now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna stick this back in my little bit, bitty heater in the back. I'll be right back one second. You get to look at this empty can and pile of mess here for just a second. put everything back in the hot box so we can get all our layers done today. All right, so here is the geode. Let me zoom back out again. Okay, so here, move things out of the way. This is the geode that we started the other day. As you can see, I layered on more glitter to create my geode pattern and use the tie-dye as the background. And we need to paint veins on this because otherwise it's fairly indistinct with the pattern. I mean, it's really, really pretty, but you can't see that it's a geode because some of the colors are fairly close. So the first thing we're gonna do, fold the sandpaper up so I can hold it in my hand, lightly sand the entire surface. that down with a little alcohol just to make sure there's no grease on it and to wipe off any residue of anything else before I go and stick paint on it and you can see I finished the bottom of the cup as well little glitter little um, foil just so that it's con because this one didn't have a black bottom this had a metal bottom so I had sanded this and done the foil and everything on that as well um, Hi Gina, hi Rima, nice to see you. Um, once again, if I miss your comments or don't say hi to you, it's because it's all scrolled past and I haven't been able to see it in a timely fashion. All right, so we're gonna go back in. We're gonna take a couple more colors and I think we're gonna use a little gold as well today. Um, and since I don't have standard bright gold paint, Seem, somehow I seem to be out of it. We're going to use um, a faux metal rich gold. And faux metal, when you first buy it, it's a faux effects product. It's designed to be painted on metal. And when you first buy it, it's all liquid. After a while, it starts looking like this. You cannot thin it with anything, not the golds, because that will cause it to change color. But it's still usable as long as it's soft. And then when it gets a little lumpy like that, you can use it for those of you who are familiar with rub and buff, you can use it like rub and buff. All right, let me see how I like this on here. Okay, that'll create a nice line. So I'm just basically, again, creating some detail and veins on my geode cup so that the pattern is more defined. I am not trying for straight lines. I don't know if you can see that. Right here is where I'm painting, and I'm not sure it's catching the light for you to see that. Unfortunately, 
even if it's not catching the light, I still have to paint all of this with you all watching because I need to get on to the next step. All right, so I'm going to go do a little gold line on there. It's very, very subtle. There it is right there. You can see it, but it looks pretty with the gold and it will have other colors with it just to make sure everything pops nicely. probably do a lot more um, veining outlining work um, and I don't think you can see what I'm doing on camera it was something I was taught many years ago that um, to get a straight and consistent line I'm not just I mean consistent line weight but also for this kind of thing I kind of roll the paintbrush between my fingers um, I wasn't making sense before because my mind was thinking on the next step. Um, it allows for in, uneven, really kind of great jaggedy lines if you roll the, the, the brush a little between your fingers instead of just going like this. If you take it and do this while you're drawing it along, you get some very nice, interesting, different weights in the lines. All right, so I've got the goal down on that. I'll stick that brush to the side. Let's go find our brush that we were using for the dark fuchsia color. And then we're gonna go here. Um, I've never been a person who could hold their brush back super far. I tend to, to choke up on my brush. So learning to roll um, the brush along was a really good hand loosening technique for me to learn. Sorry, I'm rolling this on my hand. That movement you just saw, it just flips the cup around so that I can get to the next spot I need to paint without pulling my hand out, without accidentally sticking my fingers in the paint, anything along those lines. back of my hand a little bit and just rolling it along and if I move this in a way that you can't see it it's because I'm actually looking at it so I can see it uh, what's good for you and what's good for me is not always the same thing This rolling technique was also something I learned in college when I was studying design. So I'm old enough now, hard to admit it, that when I first started studying design, we were using CAD and I got my red lines on here, nicely my veins. I'm gonna grab another small brush to do the white and then I'll finish the story or or not, depending on what you really want to hear. <laughs> All right, okay, so we're gonna go into the white now with a different brush. And this is a liner brush. You can see that the bristles are, are much longer, so they hold more paint, and that's used for lining. Um, I have all kinds of brushes. I know what they're there for. I don't always use them for their specific purpose. Okay, so back to this. When I was in college, um, studying design. I was at Syracuse University and we studied design uh, underneath the, the drafting, uh, the architecture school. We were all in the same building, so design students would sometimes get professors from the architecture classes coming down and teaching specific classes. We had one who did a Mies van der Rohe class. He was very, very smart and hated women. Needless to say, my class was all women, so it made for um, an interesting class. 
I don't think he was invited to teach back, but back to what I was saying, I was taking these classes so long ago that CAD had just come out when I was in school. And we had 17 students on one CAD programmed computer. Um, yeah, that was rough because we all, the only thing we could do was plot squares. It's not like CAD is today where everything's sort of set up to be better. So we had to learn to draft using specific line weights and stuff like that because plumbing walls had different line weights than electrical walls than regular walls and all of this stuff. So we had to learn to draw that with pencil leads and we learned to draw rolling the pencil so you wouldn't wear one side flat and low and not get any um, interesting clean lines out of it. I used to get in a lot of trouble because uh, my lines weren't clean. My corners never met properly. And then, you know, a few years later, everybody was using computers, so nobody had to learn that stuff. Well, that was a very exciting story about me learning to draw with a pencil. I'm sure you're all incredibly impressed that I can draw with a pencil. just getting all these lines in and I'm going to determine whether or not I want to add one more vein to this in one of the other colors because I think I might want to define where that gold crust is. So now you're starting to see how this lines up and see how sh now it really looks much more like a geode and I really like how this is coming out. Now, again, please feel free to ask questions. If I don't ask, answer them right away, um, I will get right back to them once I've posted the video live and I will be happy as can be to answer them in the post. So don't hesitate. Also, please share my videos as we go along, start watch parties, share, 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 help me grow because the more I grow, the more of these kind of videos I can do. All right, come on, I'm trying not to throw brushes everywhere. So I think I want to outline right here and I may take some of, I'm gonna do some playing around here. Let's see if I can make this work. I don't know if this is work. I've never tried this before. I'm taking a little of the gold, mixing it with a little of the fuchsia or the magenta. Let's see how that comes out. Oh, that just totally disappeared in there. That wasn't a great idea. I wanted sort of a metallic magenta, but let's see if I can get a little darker. Uh, there we go. I don't know if you can see that I actually kind of created a perfect color there. Normally I don't m suggest mixing um, foam metals with other products because they don't like it, but this will, even if this eventually patinas just a little bit, it will look great on here. Whereas without it, it looked a little dull. Now, if you saw me doing this original one, the first part of these on Saturday, um, I got a lot of questions about how food safe this is, etc what I'm top coating with. We used art resin two part epoxy to top coat these. And once the resin has dried, it is food safe. Um, so we are now seven, we're, uh, I don't know, 24 hours into uh, a 72 hour cure. So another two days, these are 100% food safe. Um, not that it kind of matters because all of these cups come with lids that most people use to hold a straw or to sip out of to keep, help keep the temperature stable inside the cup and keep it cold or hot longer. Um, but yes, because these go all the way up to the lip of the cup, I needed to make sure what I was using was 100% food safe and this is absolutely. I like how that's kind of defining it without being too harsh. 
All right, and we need a little more of the gold and mix it in with some more of the fuchsia or the magenta faux cream color. Um, I don't actually have any gold faux cream color, even though they make it, I just don't happen to have any. That happens, believe it or not, it's hard to know sometimes that when I think I have everything in the world in my studio, I find out I don't. I have still got more things that I could use. Given that I have so much crap in the studio, I can't imagine how I could possibly need more, but I always seem to. Now, um, these are not dishwasher safe, but these cups as a general rule are not anyway. Um, they are not designed to go in the dishwasher. Okay, I think we've gotten all our veining on here. And I am quite pleased with that, so give me just a second. I'm gonna go run this back to um, the hot box to let it cure up while we do the last of the cups, and then we're gonna pour resin. All right, we're down to our last cup here to work on today. And this is the other one that I started the other day. You can see it has the Abigail foil on it. It was put on over um, set coat me metallic teal. And I used the Abigail foil. And then I had painted bands of adhesive uh, around the base and around the middle band. And we used silver glitter. And Martha Stewart, let me see if I can get a good close up on this so you can see it. Martha Stewart makes these little uh, glitter bits that are cut into shapes and these were shaped like flowers that mirrored this and it was almost the identical color. So I love it. Oh, I love it. Ah, okay, so I got that done. But, and then I put uh, in, war, in glitter, I put love and lips on this side and Je t'aime and little turtle doves on this side, but I think the lettering doesn't pop as much as I would like. So we're gonna outline it. And again, we're just gonna do this. We're gonna sand the surface lightly just to take the gloss off of it. And I do the whole surface even if I'm only painting on one spot um, because I want the surface to be consistent when I pour the second layer of epoxy over this. I don't want to have um, any place where it's, the, it, the surface was treated differently because it might just show slightly in the final look. Okay, sorry, I needed to find my, ooh, I just knocked over my coffee and my paint water. Yep. And you guys wondered how I dumped the whole can of epoxy, I mean, of, of uh, foil adhesive on sat Saturday. This is how, because I have too much stuff around me all the time, and I'm trying to keep it within my reach so that you guys can, I don't have to constantly get up and grab something somewhere else. And then I do dumb things like that. So I am just a genius. And somebody is recommending something about gold paint. Unfortunately, I can't quite read it at this moment. I'm just gonna throw that wet paper towel somewhere else. I'm gonna take a little piece of this paper towel, spritz down. And then wipe the surface down. It gets off all of the sanded epoxy debris and any grease that I might have had on my hands or might have accidentally gotten near it. So now I have to outline this and these letters. So I need to create something in a color combination that works well for that. Um, I have some metallic red set coat, so I'm gonna use, I mean, metallic red um, faux cream color. Sorry, it's an older container, so I'm hoping Oh, good. It's still good. Phew. I was worried for a second there. I hate it when I grab stuff that I think is good and then it isn't. All right, so I'm going to take a little of that 
and then I'm going to outline these letters. think it's dark enough. Put a little bit of the magenta into it. Darken it up a little bit. And since this is on epoxy, watch a little alcohol. Boom, it's gone. So I can just redo with slightly darker color to make that pop more. So I've mixed a little magenta into my paint over here, my metallic red. Let's see how that looks. All right, that's better. I can see a little more. Doesn't help if I make, if I'm outlining stuff in paint, if you can't read it, even with the outline on it. Um, how do I know exactly where I'm painting? Well, my brush actually can feel the edge of the glitter. So it just follows it naturally. That's looking more legible. And that looks so much better already. It makes it a little more prominent on there. Needs a little bit of darkness right here. And then I think I'm just gonna do the same over here, but on inside and outside of the letters because it will make it look a little bigger which is kind of what I'm aiming for. Let's go back here. I know, it's very exciting watching me write over letters, but this is all part of the deal. I love doing little fussy work like this. It, I find it very relaxing. Who else likes doing little fussy stuff like this? I mean, this is, this is the stuff, like, I, if I hadn't gotten so proficient in doing larger surfaces, I probably would have stayed doing stuff like this all of my life. And then we've got the je part so it's a little larger so it can be a little more legible you can also use vinyl letters paint to through stencils freehanding whatever works for you My biggest issue with this stenciling that I did to, on this is it looked small for the size of the cup. Um, 
Inga says, folk art brush lettering paint is amazing in gold. Perfect, that's that's something I need. I Believe it or not, I don't ha have a lot of gold paints in here because most of the gold paints that I have are specific to a, a certain kind of material. And so they don't always transfer over into other projects well. find too sometimes painting lettering upside down like this uh, I can actually be more accurate in my painting because I'm not caught up in what it says uh, I'm more paying attention to the lines and the shapes not the word itself and that's a big thing you know you can get kind of lost in what you're trying to convey and you lose form. Okay. I'm getting there. I just have a little more left on the word here to do. go through some of these things with um, putting captions on photos and stuff you know it's it's very easy to either get the wrong font or the wrong color or the wrong size so that it doesn't show as well all right so I've gotten that done and then I think we need to outline these guys just to make them look a little more there. <laughs> so I'm going to do those in gold since that's gold. I just want them to look a little bigger. And I'm using, again, I'm using uh, faux effects, faux metal, and rich gold around the birds. Um, you probably can't see it as well on the camera as I can see it here but all I'm really doing is just outlining them to make them more clear. Because they're not, some of this stuff doesn't always read, you know, glitter, glitter's a challenging medium. You can, if you don't have it 100%, it doesn't always read, especially on small things when you're trying to create a, a shape through a stencil. So I wanna make sure my birds are readable, are legible. Okay. And I think I'll outline the lips in gold too, just because it entertains me to do that. Now, I do these custom, so you can place an order for one on my website that you can choose your foil, choose your glitter colors, choose your background color, whatever you want. But sometimes I just make what I want to make like I have this week. Should I do, I think maybe, let's see if I like the lips in gold. Actually, I kind of do. I'm kind of liking that. That's working for me. to 
choke up on my brush. I'm really bad about doing that. Monday I could start whistling. That might not be the best thing though. So I outlined everything. That's going to go back in the hot box. Give me a minute. And we'll start with the epoxies. Alrighty. And I just wanted to take a minute and share something with you. You remember too, we were also doing the heart-shaped table plant stand, and I told you we rolled it and I was gonna epoxy it. Well, I did epoxy the top here. I added some different glitters. Let me see if I can get the angle to shift a little. We put a little gold and a little pink glitter in there. Um, I may pour a second layer on this, and this is how I protect when I do tables. I tape off to the edge where I want it covered, and then I tape around the legs and cover the legs in plastic so that this is all protected. Um, you can see that the dribble, I don't think you can see right there, but the dribbles stop here on the tape. I may have to cut the tape off, not a big deal. That's why it's taped under there like that. Make that easier. Probably pour a second coat today while we're talking about doing this. And now I have my phone case. I'm just letting it cool a little bit because I don't want it to be hot when I pour the epoxy on it. That doesn't really help it that much, so I'm going to pull a few things out of the way. Clear some space for me, see if I can manage not to knock anything else over. All right, so I'm going to put on my gloves. See, I got paint all over my fingers. Even on a quiet day, I just can't stop messing, making messes. Okay, we are dry. I must have grabbed the palette and got it under my hands or a wet brush or something. Nothing new there. All right, so gloves on. And I'm pouring enough epoxy to cover my little tabletop, my phone cases, and my two cups. Rolling my sleeves up, trying not to get my sleeves and stuff, even though that is my normal operating method. Okay. So we're gonna pour our art resin two-part epoxy. This part is the hardener. It is a one-to-one -one measure. Equal parts, hardener and resin. Um, do not mix up your caps. Do not mix up your stir sticks. Don't put your stir sticks into stuff that you don't intend to be using that day because you can contaminate it. There we go. Just enough. Now I've done enough pouring. I always make a little more than I need. Ah, and there's our, 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 our resin. I always make a little more than I need just because um, I always find that I think I've got everything covered, and then I don't. I find a spot that, well, <laughs> I missed. Okay, so I'm pour this. Now, if you're not good at measuring eyeball, which I have become quite good at, um, measure with measuring cups. And the reason is, if you don't measure with measuring cups, 
if you have too much of the resin in there and not enough hardener, it never completely hardens. If you have too much hardener and not enough resin, I need to pour a little bit back, um, it becomes very brittle and sets up very quickly and it doesn't work as well. me out there. And there is nothing worse than having your two-part epoxy not work because that was the one step you were just a little sloppy with. You've done this all this beautiful work and then you have epoxy that doesn't harden or that goes brittle and that does bad things and doesn't get you the finish you want. So make sure when you're doing this, you scrape out all the product from the cup because you've just measured carefully. So measuring carefully doesn't help if you don't get all the product into mixed together. That was me cracking the cup. That has nothing to do with the materials. I like these little plastic cocktail cups. I use them for a lot of things. I just don't use them for color matching because the green changes how I see everything. So I'm gonna stir. And I'm stirring and scraping and stirring and scraping. And as soon as I think I'm mixed, then I stir some more. Um, I've watched other people go, Oh, you stir really slowly and you don't get any bubbles that way. Well, you're also not getting well mixed. You need to be fairly aggressive in your mixing. Once you start seeing bubbles fly, you know, you know you're pretty darn good in the mix because that means that the epoxy and the hardeners are working together. And again, don't breathe the bubbles. Don't think it's fun, don't think it's cute, don't let your dog chase them, whatever. Even though they're little tiny, they are 100% epoxy resin, and you don't want to inhale those. You don't want them in your nose. You don't want them in your lungs. Sorry, trying to get a good grip on this. It's hard when I put a lot in these little cups, but now I can't pour it off and mix in something else because I might mix, miss the amount that I need to mix together, so. I thought a little more carefully I would have done this in a bigger cup, but no, I have to do it the hard way because that's how I have to do everything. Okay, so the thing we're gonna do here now, I'm well mixed, I'm gonna pour some of this on. And it's sitting on top of a little can, tiny paint can. So it has plenty of edge area to run off. I just take a, I can take a plastic piece, I can take a foam brush. Um, I've had some epoxies that get eaten, that eat up a foam brush. This art resin does not, so it makes it very user friendly. Okay, so I've got it all on there. And um, epoxy, somebody asked me this just the other day. How, how do I get it thicker? Well, you pour it in levels because epoxy without a band around the edge to allow it to build up at all, um, naturally levels to about an eighth of an inch thick. That's how this product works. That's what it wants to do. It's just how it work goes. So if you need it thicker, you do a couple layers or you build up a band around the edge so it has a lip and then you go like that. Um, let me my glove off for just a second so I can because my glove is covered in epoxy so I want to pull it off so I can torch this and I can easily slide my hand back in so I'm torching now and again the torching between the carbon monoxide and the heat causes the bubbles to raise on the surface so you have no bubbles and it also makes it much more liquid it changes the viscosity a lot um, 
which is a good thing. All right, let me put my glove back on and I'm gonna go grab the cups. Uh, how long does it take for the epoxy to set up? Um, and how much working time? You have between 35 and 40 minutes in the pot like this. Um, if you need it longer, you want, you don't, sorry, I gotta start with some information here so I get it right. A average 30 to 45 minutes in a pot, pot that's called pot time. It takes mm, eight hours-ish to get hard, which is why I normally pour epoxy at the end of the day and leave because then I can come back the next day and it'll be dry. Um, but if you have epoxy like this in a pot, don't leave it sitting in like a tin can or stuff. It, that actually speeds the heating of it and it can cause it to harden. I know when I've done it in quart containers, I've lost a lot of pot time and all of a sudden I'll have a big lump starting to form in the center. So the recommendation is if you are doing large surfaces and need more time to work, if you're gonna need that full 40, 45 minutes, you put it in a low flat pan and keep it open because that slows down the chemical reaction and allows it to be more workable. I hope that answered your questions, Becky. Did that make sense? If it didn't, let me know. I will clarify it even further. I had a lot of knowledge up in here and sometimes what I am thinking doesn't always come out of my, my mouth correctly. So I wanna make sure I get the information so you understand it because it is absolutely not you if you don't understand it, it's me not giving you the information in a way that it's helpful to you. All right, so I'm gonna go grab those two cups. I'll be right back. Now, I don't know if you saw the way I was holding that, but because my gloves have epoxy on them and I don't want epoxy in my cups, I was grabbing these by the lip where the tape is. And I could have just grabbed it like this because quite frankly, we're gonna put them on the rollers, the tumblers over here, and we'll epoxy them that way. And I will adjust the camera in a minute. Um, both on their tumblers. There we go, there is the turners. And as you saw me do it before, all I do is take a little of the epoxy, pour it on, and take my brush and smooth it. And then I'll turn this on for a second and adjust my placement. Roll it again. Now there are different ways. I know some people pour stuff while these are rotating. Um, and that would work better for me if I was doing multiple colors of epoxy over things, but I'm not. I'm simply clear coating it. So I like to make sure I've got a smooth, even coat on as I'm applying it. And then I start the rolling and I go back. So what I've, now it's rolling and I just hold my brush. And because I can visually mark where I started and ended, I can start another layer here. I just start another round to make sure everything's got a coating on it. There we go. I kind of use the painted areas as a marker that I've gone all the way around. And I'm, all I'm doing is making sure every inch of this has got epoxy on it. Uh, 
I don't worry about the extra. I don't worry about ridges, those self-level. Making sure the bottom's got an even coat. And part of this is too, because as this moves, some of this epoxy will slide down in this direction. And to help prevent lumps on the bottom of this, if I put a, it's like I put a slip coat on so it all moves better. All right, I've got that one coated. Now we're gonna do this one. Camera just a little bit, there we go. And what I have underneath here is parchment paper. Um, it works just as well as wax paper and oftentimes I can peel if I needed to use this again, I can just peel this off of here. But really what I'm doing is creating um, a surface that is non, uh, it can't be permeated by the epoxy. And then it's just easier for cleanup. I don't have like plastic and stuff melted to the table. see I'm really kind of slow because epoxy is naturally self-leveling um, my application method other than pouring it into the inside of the cup is not as important as making sure I've just got it all coated so now again I'm going across it with the sponge brush and making sure every inch of this has epoxy on it. And the turner does the work for me. I'm just here moving the product with the sponge brush. And all the extra will drip off. If it doesn't drip, it rolls itself into an even coating. And this is why these cup turners are so important because without a turner, um, all the epoxy settles either in, on a side or on the top or on the bottom, and it's a mess. It doesn't, you don't get any even coating. All right, so I've got that all nicely coated there. Put that to the side, and the rest of this is gonna go on that little tabletop. Actually, it's twice as much as I need for it, but there you have it. Take my glove off so I can torch these. Ugh. making a mess out of myself. They don't want to come off. And this is why epoxy is usually the thing I do last in a day. So that mess is a hard one. I clean it up the next day. It's so much easier that way. If you get this on your hands or on something you don't want it on, uh, spray it with rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol and that will remove it from the surface while it's still wet. Once it's hard, you basically have to chisel the stuff off. So you can see, I'm just torching the entire surface, making sure there are no bubbles. And this is drying really well. It's already rolling off nicely. There will be little drips and dribbles. You'll see them here coming off because this is liquefying this even further as well as removing bubbles. And the heat tends to make it runnier, more liquid, thinner, which is why it allows the air bubbles to come up so well, but it can make it challenging when you want a smooth finish. So you just have to be really good and patient with the torching. Now this product is so good, I know some uh, products need to be torched more than once. Not this, this really, I have never needed to torch any of it more than one time. Because then the, um, the bubbles all, uh, sorry, settle 
after one pull, I mean after one torching. Sorry, I am trying to pull my gloves on at the same time I'm talking to you. So, all right, so there's the table. I have paper under it here on the floor. Of course, I've got it all twisted up in cords too. So, let's get that down there. And I'm just gonna pour the last of this on this tabletop while you're watching. So you can see, basically, it's the furniture is the same thing as everything else. I'm pouring on the epoxy. I've got way more on here than I need, but I'm just using up the last that I've made. I take the brush. I could do this with a sheet of polystyrene. And really, when I first started using epoxy, I was so afraid to move it around. I was like, oh gosh, I'm going to ruin it. No. Honey, play with it. Move it around. Make it, make it be what you need it to be. I almost said make it your bitch, but that not really appropriate. <laughs> uh, well, at least I entertained myself. I don't know if I entertained any of you with that. I know we are at the end of the live here. I'm going to torch these. And I can see all the little bubbles popping up. It kind of sizzles. Looks like a steak sizzling. If you get little dimples, um, go in, pop them with your finger, and then retorch, because that will then um, fill in the hole. Okay. The goal is just to keep my fingers and my sleeves out of the top. And you see, every time I manipulate it, I go back and torch it. Why? Because the manipulating can add air bubbles as well as take them out. So I just want to make sure they're gone. And there we go. All right. Oh, my fingers are going to be a mess today. I need to spray. So thank you for coming and watching with me on a Monday morning. Thank you for tolerating me looking like chaos mess because this is normally my day off, but I had stuff to do today. So I am going to finish up here, then I'm gonna finish up here, and I'm gonna go enjoy my Monday. Talk to you all later, bye.